North Battleford RCMP are investigating a couple of violent robberies from last week. In both cases, the victims were hit over the head with an object. Now, police are looking for two suspects in these separate attacks. The latest incident happened early yesterday morning. Now, this suspect is accused of knocking his victim out cold. He's described as possibly a Caucasian male, six feet tall, and was last seen wearing a red Adidas jacket and green and white running shoes. Now, in the other robbery, police are looking for an Aboriginal man, about five foot eleven, short black hair, and was last seen wearing a black coat with a black fur-lined hoodie and blue pants. Now, anyone with information on any of these robberies is asked to call North Battleford RCMP or Crime Stoppers. The suicide of a 15-year-old BC girl continues to make headlines around the country. Amanda Todd was found dead in her home last week. She posted a video online five weeks earlier detailing how she was bullied, including a devastating fallout to an incident where she flashed someone online. Now, sexting is becoming increasingly popular in high schools, and while some students may think it's harmless, RCMP are painting a different picture. Amanda Todd's video has been seen hundreds of thousands of times after the young girl took her own life last week. She opened up about the bullying that was taking place in her life. But one of the incidents that would send her into a downward spiral was when she flashed a guy online. Eventually, that nude photo of her would be sent to several people. Amanda writes that the incident gave her anxiety, made her depressed, and led her to abuse drugs and alcohol. Well, if someone is caught distributing those types of pictures online, via it be texting, internet, Facebook, that person could face criminal consequences for their actions. Um, RCMP want teenagers to know those consequences could be very serious. A recent study shows nearly a third of all underage kids have engaged in sexting, but this could be considered child pornography. What's worse, depending on your age, if found guilty, the punishment would stay with you forever. They would be classified as a sex offender and they would have to register every year. As for Amanda Todd, police are looking for the people accused of bullying her, including the person who sent out the photo. Police have set up a special email account to gather tips from the public. As for any teenager who may think sexting is harmless, police have this message. They just need to be aware that this is not funny. This is, you know, what they think may be a joke and harmless can actually be a criminal offense and they need to be aware that there's consequences that can follow those actions. The city is rushing to wrap up construction on Highway 16 before the weather takes a turn for the worse. Now today, the eastbound lanes of 44th Street reopened, but now work will begin on the other side. Where you have work on the north side of 44th Street between 45th and 50th Avenue is currently underway to begin underground infrastructure upgrades. The south side will uh, reopen to two-way traffic and on the north side they'll be mainly doing underground work in the area of 49th Avenue. Motorists and businesses can expect traffic delays to continue and are advised to use alternative routes. Well, we have a detailed traffic accommodation strategy in place and uh, that will continue to be implemented uh, over the course of the work on the north side and uh, you know uh, the businesses uh, we expect to be able to accommodate customers getting to their to their businesses. The city is aiming to reopen all four lanes by the start of November and is reminding drivers to allow extra time and obey all signs in construction zones. Friday Night Lights is now a reality in the border city. The new lights on Holy Rosary's football field were used for the first time last night and excitement is growing for what this new addition will bring to Lloydminster. Elise Cox has more. It was almost two months ago that the new football lights were being installed on Holy Rosary's field and now the opening ceremony for the Raider Bowl wasn't just to get everyone pumped for the upcoming game but let them know that it would be done under brand new lights for the first time in Lloydminster. We're all pretty pumped, uh, really excited about this game coming on, the lights coming on for this game and uh, I mean we've been waiting a long time for this and I think it shows what a, when a bunch of people put together their minds and efforts what, what can be accomplished. The new lights will not only allow for later start times but attract more high-profile games for the future. 
provincial games late in November when it gets dark out at four o'clock. I mean, you got to start early, and uh, a lot of times you won't even get a chance to host those games if you don't have lights. So it's going to expand what we're able to host here for sure. And uh, I mean, everyone likes likes the term Friday night lights, and that's what we're going to have now. But for players and coaches, it's the small things that will go a long way. The nice thing is, is that we can come out here and practice, and like, we can hold practices at six o'clock at regular time. Guys don't have to go to practice right after school because when you're dealing with daylight this time of year you're running out of time about you know 6 30 7 o'clock so you know as it gets later we have to start early and earlier and for the players that got to play under the lights for the first time it was just phenomenal experience a uh, little harder concentrating on the football but we still got it done the new lights were a coordinated effort a year in the making that required fundraising and community support uh, lots of guys involved in fundraising uh, coordinating it with the Lloyd Catholic School Division because this is where we knew we wanted to have them and uh, that way it benefits you know the Raiders High School our minor football program as well. The next step they'd like to take to revamp the field is build more bleachers and make dressing rooms for the teams. Elise Cox, Newcap News. Uh, it was another busy weekend for area hockey teams including the Rohan Rage who had back-to-back -back home games against the St. Albert Flyers. The battle of the top two teams from the AMMHL North Division last year lacked scoring on Saturday, but there was obviously little difference between the two. The Rage outshot the Flyers 35-24, but Edmonton Oil Kings first round pick Patrick Day couldn't be beat. Dakota Kenyon earned the goose egg for the Rage. The two teams were back at it again this afternoon. They played a scoreless first period in the second. Chandler Klein feeds Chase Basement. He can't finish. Neither can Taylor Anselm. Flyers in the offensive zone. Big block sets up a sloppy Rage chance. Brinson Pasichnuk can't get his twig on it. But the Rage go on the power play. Zach Fisher on the wing. Pulls some moves. Puts it in front. They get multiple cracks at it in the blue paint. But can't bury it. Minutes later, the Flyers get their best chance so far. But Brandon Bow can't capitalize. Then Dylan Overdyke's shot from the point sails wide. With five minutes left in the second, the lightning quick Ethan Lazaro creates space, gets his own rebound for the first goal in nearly five periods. 30 seconds later, more flyers. Braden Callis' shot from the point hits Cam Mazur's body in front and in, busting the game wide open after a lengthy deadlock. They keep the pressure on in the last minutes of the second. They find a man alone in front it's Kieran Arcan putting the visitors up 3-0. Before the period's out, things get chippy. The Rage lay a big hit, then the Flyers respond with no time left. Big scrum ensues, crazy amount of penalties given. The Rage end up on the power play. With the man advantage, D-Men working the puck before Sean Weber wires one home. Wicked shot, an awesome selly right in front of the visitor's penalty box. A little cheeky. Rage add more on another power play. Quinn Soba's shot from the point goes right to Chase Bateman, who makes it a 3-2 game. Rage looking for more. Sean Weber nearly pulls off a wraparound, but can't get the rebound. Then Jared Coghill's shot is blocked. Flyers back the other way. Josh Parrott can't get a shot away, but Danton Brooks is unable to cover it. Pops out to Lazaro for his second of the afternoon for two Flyers. The Rage pull the goalie. With 17 seconds left, they jam in the crease and find a hole to make it a one-goal game, but they can't do any more. The Rage drop a battle 4-3. They're winless in their last three games. The Lloyd Minster Bobcats were even busier than the Rage. A night after they lost 4-1 to the Canmore Eagles, the Orange and Blacks scored a come-from-behind victory over the Okotoks Oilers. The Cats scored with just one second left in the first and 25 seconds left in the second. This one needed a shootout where their two goal scorers in regulation, Matty Marcino and Dustin Lebrun, also scored in the shootout as the Cats win 3-2. The Bobcats again came back today to send their game against the Mustangs into a shootout. Dustin LeBron and Grant Baker scored late in the third, but no cat could score in four rounds of one-on-one. -on -one. Joe Serpico won it for the Stangs. The Cats grabbed three of a possible six points on their southern road trip. Every single game they've lost this year, the opponent has scored four or more goals. 
Meanwhile, the Lloyd Minster Bandits rebounded from back to back one goal losses with a massive win over the Saddle Lake Warriors. The Bandits fired 54 shots on net. Chris Romanchuk led the way with four goals and three assists. He now leads the league with 19 points in five games. The Lloyd Minster Universal Heat nearly matched the Bandits' offensive output. They stayed undefeated by beating CAC 7 3. Kale Clegg scored a hat trick, including the game winner short handed in the second period. He added an assist to give him 18 points in seven games, putting him fourth in league points and tops for defensemen. And the Bigger Hughes Bobcats had the closest weekend of any teams. On Saturday, the Cats led 2 0 on goals by Tyler Bush and Andrew Kep, but the Royals came back with two quick goals in the second to not the score 2 all. The game stayed that way despite the AAA Cats throwing 37 shots on net. And this morning, the Cats again battled to a draw against a Calgary team. Tyler Bush scored the only goal for the visitors who held the lead until four seconds left in the game when Madison Dunn put one past Josh Bukowski to tie the game. Bukowski stopped 31 shots as the Baker Hughes Bobcats moved to 2-2-2 two, two, two on the season.